Welcome back, John. Nice to see you. Great to be here. So you, you guys had a pretty good year, the Ariel Flagship Fund beating the S&P. Value really came back to life this year. Does that continue into, into 2022? Because there are some signs here, especially lately, that big cap tech is still the way to go. No, I feel strongly that 2022 is really going to be a great, great year for value. And the, these large tech stocks have had their run the last 12 years. They have some spikes here recently. But we really do believe strongly that higher interest rates are going to cause these very expensive technology companies to really have a significant downturn in 2022. But what are those higher interest rates going to do, John, for the economy? A lot of people worry about that. And the fact that it's been so boosted by fiscal and monetary stimulus, when that goes away, it'll hurt. And value can't really work in that environment either. Well, I think we're going to be fine. I think the economy is still quite, quite strong. I was just on the phone with the CEO of a large industrial company. He was saying how good business is. And, uh, you know, we're out there talking to our management teams, and people say the momentum is continuing. So I think the higher rates will not be enough to slow down uh, this economic recovery. And, again, these undervalued stocks that are selling at single-digit PEs often, selling at such a discount to the S&P, are well positioned to do extraordinarily well. How many rate hikes do you think we'll see next year? I think it will be more than the three that have been suggested. You know, we have been consistent, and, you know, my colleague, Charlie, Bo Charlie Bobrinsko, <laughs> oh, he's been know. very— Oh, we know. He's, a, he's worried know? about inflation. <laughs> yeah, we've been worried about inflation for a couple of years now. Our favorite economist, Bob Oliver from the University of Chicago, has helped pound that point home. So we think uh, inflation is not transitory. It will be longer lasting than people think. And therefore, they're going to have to raise rates more frequently than the common wisdom would suggest. But the economy can, can withstand it. John, I want to get to some of your picks. Viacom CVS stood out because basically Archegos was the most exciting thing to happen to that stock. And since it's come down off of that, it, it's gone nowhere. So what's the catalyst? We think the catalyst is that, first and foremost, the stock is so extremely cheap. You know, it's seven and a half times next year's cash earnings selling at a discount, we think, of you know, over 50 percent. And so, one, it's just bargain price. It's just we think the base bottom is there. We think the fact that Sherry Redstone, uh, the chairman, and Bob Backus, the CEO, have been buying stock personally, that is also a sign as a catalyst that show us that there's real value there. And we continue to think Paramount Plus is going to continue to outperform. You know, that streaming service is already bringing in more subscribers than anyone could have imagined. And as we move into 2022, we think there'll be pleasant surprises there from Paramount Plus. Another another top pick of yours, which has actually been a loser this year, is MSG, Madison Square Garden. Obviously, Omicron and, and Delta variants, no, no one really saw coming. So it, that, that wrecked the whole reopening theme. But it hasn't performed as well as a Live Nation or some of these other reopening stocks. So what's the problem there? I think we think part of the problem is that there's really still continues to be a, a Dolan discount. You know, even though Jim Dolan has always made money for his shareholders, he's done a great job in being able to uh, do the right things on um, behalf of shareholders, there still is a significant discount there for because Jim Dolan is the CEO and major owner of Madison Square Garden Entertainment. The other big problem is that they merged with Madison Square Garden Networks. And uh, the regional sports nets have had a very, very difficult time as you have so much cord cutting. And there's been a transition period here as we move to a direct-to-consumer model. And so the market doesn't like uh, regional sports nets. And because they own that, it's been a real major drag on the stock. But we still believe with the gaming dollars coming in from FanDuel and the others, uh, you're going to have better advertising than you could ever imagine, uh, better sponsorships than you could ever imagine, possibly a sports book uh, at the Garden itself, uh, which is, you know, so valuable uh, a piece of real estate in New York City. So we think it's really well positioned here, and uh, it's been a disappointing stock. But that's what we've tried to do at Ariel, buy more of our, our favorite companies when they're on sale.